Good day everyone and welcome to my video lesson. My name is Vaurjan Sarsinola and I work as a teacher of physics in Nazarbayev Intellectual School of Astana. And today I'm going to talk about electromagnetic induction. Now, dear students and colleagues, let's start our lesson that name as electromagnetic induction. Our learning objectives of this lesson are understand how current can be induced, calculate flux or flux linkage using next formulas, identify situations in which an electromotive force is induced and determine the magnitude of the EMF by using Faraday's law, find the direction of the induced current using Lenz's law and application of the electromagnetic induction. Vocabulary that uh, maybe you will use during this lesson are induction, flux, electromotive force, loop, angle and magnetic field. And there are translations of these words in two languages, Russian and Kazakh. The magnetic effect of electric current has been observed in many experiments performed by Ampere and Orsted. The question of whether a current could be generated or induced using a magnetic field was answered in the 18th century by Michael Faraday. There are numbers of ways to generate electric current by means of magnetic field. Let's consider the following experiment with the help of the next simulation. Okay, dear students and colleagues, in this simulation we have a bar magnet that has its own south and north pole and we already know that direction of the field lines of this bar magnet from north to south and also we have a loop that connected with a lamp lamp itself can be removed and changed by a meter of voltage that also connected to the resistor it does mean this meter uh, has its own re resistance and connected to the loop itself in this simulation we also can decrease or increase number of loops for our experiment and the size of the loop also we can change a strength of a bar magnet as for now, I will place uh, strength of the magnet to 50%. So, a magnet is moved towards a loop of wire and ends a connection to a measure its voltage. We can see that in the direction normal to the plane of the loop as shown in the simulation we can register change in voltage let's change it with a bulb as we can see as we move a bar magnet forward to the loop we can observe that our bulb is shining but not so bright so the next question to what extent we can produce a current to make a lamp shine brighter. For example, if we are simply placed near the coil of uh, our bar magnet, but don't move it, nothing happens. The current has been created as a result of the motion of the magnet relative to the loop of wire, as you can see now. If we know uh, that we are moving a bar magnet towards the coil faster, we can see that lamp starts to shine brighter. If we move the coil towards the magnet, we again find reading, reading of the voltmeter. And as we also move it faster, we can have difference of voltage. This indicates that its relayed motion of the coil and magnet has is responsible for the effect. If a magnet of greater strength is used, the current produced is greater. 
Now I increase the strength of the magnet until 100% and moving our bar magnet slowly through the loop we can observe that current was increased as our lamp shines brighter. Let's have a look if we will increase the number of turns of the loop, how will have an effect on the brightness of the lamp. You can see that I'm moving our bar magnet not so fast, but a lamp shining brighter number of times. So, let's check how a brightness of this lamp, or in other words, how current will affect on an increase of area of the loop. Again, we can see that brightness of our lamp increased. It does mean the current produced is also depends on an area of the loop. Let's add a field meter to the area where we will move our bar magnet through a loop. And we can see that when magnet insert a loop, we have a change in the magnetic field that induces a current in the loop. So let's make a conclusion. Our problem is now to find the common thread in all these observations. To summarize the observations that are the current registered by the galvanometer increases when the relative speed of the magnet with respect to the coil increases, the strength of the magnet increases, the number of turns increases, the area of the loop increases, and the magnet moves at right angles to the plane of the loop. Faraday found that the common thread behind all these observations in the concept of the magnetic flux. Imagine a loop of wire if this loop in a region of magnetic field whose magnitude and direction is constant when we define magnetic flux as follows. Magnetic flux is the quantity of magnetic field lines that passes through a surface. The un unit of the magnetic flux is Weber. And you can see the formula for the magnetic flux, where magnetic flux is equal to the magnetic field, area of the loop, and angle between magnetic field direction and the direction normal to the loop area. And if we have more than one loop, if we have number of loops, we will use the next formula, where n is the number of turns of the loop, in which we can speak that uh, it's named as flux linkage. Now, let's solve a problem uh, where given is a rectangular loop of side 1 meter and 2 meter is confined to a magnetic field of 0.5 Tesla. Calculate the magnetic flux through the loop if the angle between the normal of the loop and the magnetic field is a 0 degree, B 30 degree, C 90 degree and D 120 degree. This simple problem will explain us how flux linkage depends on an angle of a normal that make it with an magnetic field lines. So according to the given of the uh, first problem, we have a rectangular loop that sides of which was equal to 1 meter and B side which was equal to 2 meters and magnetic field was equal to 0.5 Tesla. Uh, so we now need to identify magnetic flux when angle between normal 
um, and magnetic field was equal to, in first case, zero degree. In second case, it was equal to 30 degree. In case of C, it was equal to 90 degree. And D, it was equal to 120 degree. So let's observe situation uh, A when we had a rectangular loop and normal and magnetic field lines was parallel to each other. In other words, angle between them was equal to zero degree. So, according to the formula, magnetic flux equal to the multiplication of the magnetic field multiplied on an area of a loop and cosinus alpha. So magnetic field was equal to 0.5 Tesla multiplied on an area of a loop is equal to 2 meters square and cosinus alpha in case of zero degree it was equal to one and according to the multiplication our result is one Weber. In case B um, normal of a rectangular loop makes 30 degree with the magnetic field lines. So in other words we have a rectangular loop and this aligns make 30 degree with the normal of rectangular loop so our alpha was equal to 30 degree so the same formula but in this case we have change in cosinus alpha so magnetic field was equal to 0.5 tesla multiplied on a 2 meter square and multiplied on a in case of a 30 degree cosinus alpha equal to 0 0.86 therefore we have a 0 0.86 Weber in case C uh, normal of a rectangular loop makes 90 degree with the magnetic field lines as you can see in the resulting picture, no magnetic field lines penetrate the rectangular loop. And cosinus alpha, in case of 90 degree, equal to zero. It does mean that magnetic field, I mean magnetic flux, equal to zero Weber. Because cosinus alpha in case of a 90 degree is equal to zero. So in case of D, dear students and colleagues, uh, we have again the same formula for the identifying a magnetic flux in case of 120 degree and in this case cosinus alpha is equal to minus 
0.5. Y minus, it does mean that direction of the magnetic field that penetrate a rectangular coil is changed. Therefore, our answer is equal to minus 0.5 Weber. So it's a result of a first problem. So this problem shows us when normal of a rectangular loop makes zero degree with a magnetic field lines, result of magnetic flux will show maximum magnitude. And from other side, if a normal of a rectangular loop and a magnetic field lines make 90 degree, our result will show minimum magnitude. So, to increase the magnetic flux, we must increase the loop area that is exposed to the magnetic field, increase the value of the magnetic field, and have the loop normal to the magnetic field. In this picture, you can see that an angle between normal and magnetic field lines are parallel to each other. It does mean the value for the uh, magnetic field flux is uh, maximum. So, what does the magnetic flux have to do with the problem of how a magnetic field can create an electric field? The answer lies in the changing magnetic flux. So, let's use a simulation to explain this answer. In this simulation, we have a voltage meter, a coil that consists from one, two, three, four loops, a lamp, and also we can add one more coil that will consist from two loops, and we have a magnet that has north and south poles. So, also let's show field lines of a magnet. In all the cases we described when we have a magnetic flux through the loop, which was changing with time, as the magnet is brought closer to the loop area, the value of the magnetic field at the loop position is increased and so is flux. You can see that as it increases, the number of field lines that insert in the loop is increasing. So, a change of a magnetic field induces a current in a loop. In our case, in a coil that consists from two loops. The same example we can observe if we will insert our magnet in a coil that consists from more number of uh, turns. And you already know that in this case, current will increase. So, thus, uh, there seems to be a connection between the amount of current induced and the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage through the loop. This is known as Faraday's law. Faraday found that the induced EMF is equal to the negative rate of change of magnetic flux. Often, the flux passes through a coil of wire containing more than one loop. If the coil consists of a number of loops, or we symbolize this with the letter N, the total induced EMF is a number of times greater than each loop. For the general case, the total induced EMF is described by Faraday's formula as following, where we have a induced electromotive force and number of turns, magnetic flux, and time taken when magnetic flux was linking a loop or number of turns of a loop. The minus sign in the induced EMF equation is related to polarity of the induced EMF and direction of the induced current, which will be discussed in the next slides. So let's solve a problem where we have a given uh, that says that a coil of wire consists of 20 turns. 
Each loop has an area of 25 cm square. A magnetic field is perpendicular to the surface of each loop. At time 0 seconds, the magnitude of the magnetic field at the location of the coil is 5 multiplied 10 minus 2 degree Tesla. At a later time 0 0.0 0.1 second, the magnitude of the field at the coil has increased to 7 multiplied 10 minus, minus 2 degree Tesla. So we, can, we need to find uh, the average EMF induced in the coil during this time interval. And the second, what will the value of the average induced current be if a resistor of 10 with minus 2 degree ohm is connected to the coil? Let's solve it. So, according to the given of our problem number two, we have 20 turns of a coil. So, area of that coil was equal to 25 centimeter square. Let's convert it into uh, meter square is equal to 25 centimeter square equal to 25 multiplied on a 10 minus 4 degree meter square. Uh, initial time was equal to time zero was equal to zero seconds. Uh, and magnetic field at that time was equal to 5 multiplied on 10 minus 2 degree Tesla and time 2 was equal to 0 0.1 seconds and at this, at this time magnetic field was changed to 7 multiplied on a 10 minus 2 degree Tesla. In this uh, problem we need to find out uh, EMF produced and current strengths that induced as a result of change of magnetic field. So let's remind the formula of Faraday's law that was equal to the multiplication of a number of turns and also EMF was directly proportional to the magnetic flux divided on a difference of time. We remember that as we move uh, our magnet uh, that produces magnetic field through the loop, our EMF is increasing. But that's why that if uh, time taken will be bigger, EMF produced will be uh, lower. So, uh, in, t in case of number of turns, it was equal to 20 number of turns that uh, multiplied to the uh, magnetic flux that equal to the multiplication of a secondary magnetic field and area and we will subtract it from an initial magnetic field multiplied on an area of a loop and divided on a difference of, on, of time. So let's put physical magnitudes of the physical quantities. So is equal to the 20 that multiplied on uh, 7 of 2 degree Tesla and multiplied on an area of a loop that was equal to 25 multiplied on a 10 1 is 4 degree meter in square and subtract from um, 5 multiplied on uh, 10 minus 2 degree Tesla 
and area is the same. Multiply it to the 25 of minus 4 degree meter square and divide it on a difference of time that equal to 0.1 second as uh, our initial time was only a zero and the result of subtraction will be equal to 0.1 second uh, so and result of our EMF produced so will be equal to 10 minus 2 degree volt so now let's um, identify a current produced so as we have a EMF in other word voltage uh, inside the circuit we can identify or calculate a current produced so current is equal to the EMF divided on a resistance that was equal to the 10 minus 2 degree ohm. So, according to a given of a task and a calculation, we can divide the numbers and the result will be 1 ampere. So, result of uh, current strength in a circuit was equal to 1 ampere. Okay, dear audience, uh, in the picture you can observe that two pores of water are placed on an induction stove. The stove itself is cool to touch. The water in the metal pot is boiling, while that in the glass pot is not. How can such a cool stove boil water? And why isn't the water in the glass pot boiling? So, to answer to this question, let's observe a video where we can observe some experiments that done by uh, my colleague. Induction is very different to gas and electric. It's a completely different experience and technology. Inside the stove plate you've got an electromagnet that actually spins around and turns the pan into the elements. Okay, students and colleagues, uh, it's time to answer to this question. Induction cooking hits a cooking pot by magnetic induction instead of by thermal conduction or an electrical heating element. Inductive heating directly hits the pot. A very rapid increases in temperature can be achieved. In an induction cooker, a coil of copper wire is placed under the cooking pot and an alternating electric current is passed through it. The resulting escalating magnetic field induces a magnetic flux which repeatedly magnetizes the port. This produces current in the port, which because of the resistance of the port hits it. For nearly all modes of induction cooktops, a cooking vessel must be made of contain or contain a ferromagnetic metal such as uh, iron or some stainless steels. However, copper, glass, non-magnetic stainless steels and aluminium vessels can be used if placed on a, a ferromagnetic disc 
which functions as a conventional hot plate. An induced EMF causes a current in a circuit, just as the EMF of battery does. The polarity of a battery is obvious, but the polarity of induced EMF and induced current can be identified using Lenz law that follows that the polarity of induced EMF is such that it causes an induced current whose direction induces a magnetic field. In the opposite direction to the external flux change, the minus sign in Faraday's law of induction is a reminder of this opposition to the external flux changes. Consider a situation like shown in this picture, in which a bar magnet is moved toward the stationary loop of a wire. As the magnet moves to the right towards the loop, the magnetic flux through the loop increases with time. To counteract this interact in interface in flux to the right, the induced current produces a flux to the left, as shown in this figure B. Therefore, the induced current is in the direction indicated. On the other hand, if the magnet were moving towards the left, the magnetic flux through the loop would decrease with time. To counteract this decrease, the flux must increase to the right, thus induced current produces a flux to the right. In this case, the induction current will flow in the opposite direction to the previous case. So, according to Lenz laws, he states that the polarity of induced EMF is such that it causes an induced current whose direction induces a magnetic field in the opposite direction to the external flux change with the help of a right-hand rule. So, uh, have a look on this picture, please. We have a bar magnet and a loop. Direction of a bar magnet to the loop with the North Pole. So, the north pole of the magnet enters first. The flux in the loop is increasing because the magnetic field at the loop is getting bigger as the magnet approaches. So the induced current must then oppose the increase in the flux. This can be done if the induced current produces a magnetic field in the opposite direction to that of the bar magnet. Thus, the current will, will flow in a counterclockwise direction when looked uh, from a side of a bar magnet. So, uh, also, as I mentioned before, we're using right-hand rule to identify direction of the magnetic field induced and current as well. Um, our thumb show direction of the induced magnetic field and our other fingers direction of the current induced. So, in the second pictures C and D, you can observe uh, as a magnet goes outside the loop, I mean to the left, from right to the left, and as it uh, goes to the left, it induces south pole in a loop of a wire. So, again, uh, as it's as we know the direction of the induced magnetic field from north to, to south and we will use our right hand rule uh, where our thumb show direction of the magnetic field induced as a result of change of a magnetic flux of a bar magnet um, and our other fingers show that now direction of the induced current is clockwise if we will have a look from a side of a magnet. So, we have a, a next problem. Here we have a rectangular coil of area 0.5 meter square is placed in a uniform magnetic field of 0.2 Tesla. The loop is rotated from the horizontal to the vertical position in 0.05 seconds. You need to calculate the induced EMF on the loop and secondly, the magnitude and the direction of induced current on the resistor, as we can see at the bottom of the picture. And we need to identify direction between number 2 or 1, so the current should flow from to the left or to the right. Let's solve this problem. So, according to our last problem about an AC generator, we have an 
area of a loop that was equal to 0.5 meter square magnetic field that equal to 0.2 Tesla and time difference was equal to 0.05 seconds. We need to identify EMF induced and current strength. Also, we can we need to identify a direction of a current produced. So let's first of all calculate EMF. So according to the Faraday's law, EMF induced is equal to the uh, number of turns multiplied to the magnetic flux linkage and divided on a time difference. So therefore, we have uh, one loop multiplied on a uh, 0.2 Tesla, it's our magnetic field, and multiplied on an area 0.5 meter square, and divided on a time difference that equal to 0.05 seconds. According to our calculation, it's our EMF induced equal to 2 volts. Uh, with the help of uh, this calculation, we can easily find out current induced in a coil between two poles of a magnet. So, current is equal to the EMF induced and divided on a resistance that we have. So, it's equal to the 2 divided on 4 and therefore we have a result of 0.5 amperes. Now we need to identify the direction of the uh, current. So we will use right hand rule and uh, this indicates that direction of the current uh, directed to the left. So answer is it to the left side. Answer number two. Direction to the left. In order to understand how alternative current generator does work, let's observe a video that will explain you uh, usage of a lens law in this example. In this module, you will learn about an AC generator. An AC generator is an electric generator that converts mechanical energy to electrical energy in the form of an alternating EMF or alternating current. Working principle of an AC generator. An AC generator works on the principle of electromagnetic induction. In electromagnetic induction, when there is a relative motion between a coil and a magnetic field, an electric current or EMF is induced in the coil. Parts of an AC generator. An AC generator has an armature ABCD. It is a rectangular coil with many turns wound around a soft iron core. A shaft, it can be rotated rapidly. A field magnet, it may be a strong permanent magnet with concave poles. Two slip rings S1 and S2, these are connected to the armature and thus rotate with it. Two brushes B1 and B2, they provide electrical contact with the slip rings and a load which may be a galvanometer as shown. Working of an AC generator when the armature rotates between the poles of the field magnet, the magnetic flux linked with the armature changes continuously. As a result, an EMF is induced in the armature. This in turn produces an electric current through the armature and the galvanometer and through the slip rings and the brushes. Note, 
that the galvanometer needle swings between the negative and positive values. This means that an alternating current is flowing through the galvanometer. Direction of induced current Initially, the armature ABCD is vertical with its arm AB up and CD down. The direction of magnetic field is from left to right. As the armature undergoes a half rotation clockwise, arm AB moves down while arm CD moves up. According to Fleming's right hand rule, the current will flow in the direction DCBA. So, the current will flow from B1 to B2 through the galvanometer. Now during the next half rotation, arm AB moves up while arm CD moves down. Again by Fleming's right hand rule, current will flow in the direction ABCD that is from B2 to B1 through the galvanometer. Thus, the induced current changes its direction every half rotation. Graphical representation of induced EMF. Suppose the armature takes t seconds to complete one rotation clockwise. At time t is equal to zero second, the armature ABCD is vertical with arm AB up and arm CD down. At this position, when the armature rotates, the rate of change of magnetic flux is momentarily zero. Hence, the induced EMF at this position is zero. During the first quarter rotation, the induced EMF increases. Then at time t upon 4 seconds, the armature becomes horizontal. At this position, the rate of change of magnetic flux momentarily attains the maximum value. Therefore, the induced EMF at this position is maximum. During the second quarter rotation, the induced EMF decreases. Then at time t upon 2, the armature again becomes vertical and therefore the induced EMF is zero. During the third quarter rotation, the induced EMF increases but has an opposite polarity as compared to that of the first half rotation. At time 3t upon 4 seconds, the induced EMF attains its maximum negative value. During the fourth quarter rotation, the induced EMF decreases and becomes zero momentarily at time t seconds as the armature is vertical once again. So the magnitude of the induced EMF is sinusoidal. Here we have a reference list uh, that I used during this presentation. Thank you for your attention and goodbye everybody.